tuning in to the online broadcast network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Rock out, right? <laughs> you pick Zeppelin, you're, you're off to a good start. Yeah, we thought we wanted to kick this interview off, right? I like it, I like it. Hey guys, welcome back to another Spotlight On here at After Buzz TV. I'm your host, JJ Jurgens, and I have a very special guest today in the house. We have Ryan Pavey, who plays Nathan West on General Hospital. That's very true. <laughs> Yay, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, I want to start out, for some of you that don't know, Ryan was already here before, so there is already a spotlight on that exists. So I want to encourage you all to go out there and check that one out, because there's a lot of good insights to how he got into the business, a lot of things he likes playing video games, oh, lots yes. of good info on there. But we're going to dive into now a second layer of Ryan in this interview. So, But I wanted to pick one of my favorite things about the, that interview was learning that your love for Batman and wanting to play a superhero role. So we here at After Buzz wanted to give okay. you a little thanks for coming coming back here two times in a okay. row. So we have a little special gift, and uh, I also am part of the Butt Chin Mafia. The Butt Chin Mafia? Yes, right. so, so yeah, there's a little, a little thing. Open it you, now, you, can open open it now. you can open it now, you can read right. out now, it just kind of relates. I like it, see here, check this, oh, I like it. Watch, this is how this works. I know this has all the apple <laughs> stuff on it, but we're just gonna do that. That's good. And that's gonna go there. This way, you know which cup is yours, there. and which cup Alrighty. is mine. I'll take it. Butt Chin Mafia, cheers. There, cheers. <laughs> yeah, so here's to, when you're playing games, having a brew, you can put the intentions out of being a superhero. Have a cup with a cape. Yes. I like it. <laughs> there you go. All right, well. <laughs> Today is Mother's Day. Yes, we it have is. a great picture here of you and your beautiful mom. That's, for you guys to see. That's me. Where were you guys? Well, that's Hermosa Beach. Okay. That we had kind of like the same spot. It's all the way down at the end of the. Uh, if you're familiar with the area, or if I you am, find I yourself love there. That. So all the way down at the south end where the strand kind of stops. Mm -hmm. That was our spot all the time. So Aww. beach days. So a lot of good memories there, huh? Oh yeah, yeah. Ah. I went back not I don't know maybe a couple of months ago. It was super super nostalgic. It's weird yeah. to be there. Yeah. This makes me think of my mom and Mickey's. There's a sub sandwich place down there. You get mm. a turkey sub from Mickey's. That beach is actually my favorite place in the entire city. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> well, you and your mom just recently had a hot date night. Yes, she we was did. your date for the daytime Emmys. Tell yes, us she about was. that. It was fun. I mean, she's been joking with me for a long time since I, I, I guess, since I started the whole acting thing. One of these days, you know, you're going to take me to the Emmys. I was like, well, mm -hmm. I'm not going to the Emmys quite yet, but I am presenting at the daytime Emmys. You want to go? And so she's like, oh, my God, yeah, cool. So she got to wear a dress, and we did the red carpet thing, took pictures, and, mm -hmm. and, and it was fun. It was a cool night. It was really cool to kind of, like, make good on that promise yeah. in what way I could. And it was fun. She got to meet everybody. Everybody got to meet my mom, which mm -hmm. was kind of hysterical. It was cool. It was a fun night. It was such a pretty being at the Warner Brothers lot this year, too. That red carpet was, like, epic <sighs> old Hollywood-style red was carpet. A trip. Did she love that? It was yeah. a trip. She... I, I think that that kind of world, I think, is a little surreal to her until, mm -hmm. like, we got there. And then I'm just like, okay, just so you know, the next, like, 150 feet or so are going to be a little intense. Mm -hmm. Just bear with me here. It'll uh -huh. be it'll be okay. You know, take three steps, three steps, three steps. And, yeah. it, I mean, it was kind of cool. It was really, really fun. Like, she got to get all dolled up, and there was all this. And the set there was beautiful. Mm -hmm. the, the the space that they, that we performed if you could call it a performance, mm -hmm. what we presented where the awards actually took place was stunningly beautiful and huge, big, grand in scope, and, and it was great. It was a great night. Mm -hmm. So you presented with your co-star, Kirsten Storms. Kirsten, yes. Yeah, Kirsten. Um, what was it like just looking out and seeing the room of all of the peers and all the other daytime people? I know, love stuff like that. I I mean, I was... I was I was very honored when I received the message that they wanted me to perf to, to present. And I was, well, of course. I mean, they always ask you, like, would you like to do it? Of course I'd like to do it. Mm -hmm. Kind of a rhetorical question. <laughs> um, no, I was honored. Um, and it was great. Kirsten's, like, kind of been along this whole journey with me. She was there for my screen tests. She was there mm -hmm. for my first episodes. Like, all of our, a lot of our work on the show is together. So it was kind of cool to present with her. 
and to look out at the crowd at all of these people who have been doing this for mm-hmm. many, 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 many years. There's some there's some staples there. There's legacy characters from my show, from several other shows, and to kind of be in the same room to get a chance to honor some of them for their work mm-hmm. was was great. You know, I mean, it's a very humbling experience to stand there and have people listen to what you say for a little while. Particularly me, I feel like such a newcomer on the scene, so it was yeah. very cool. I was honored. Was there anyone in that room that you really were excited to meet or wanted to meet that night? Uh, Lisa G will crack up over this. Betty White. Yeah, I really yeah. wanted to talk to <laughs> Betty White. Um, I didn't get the chance, oh. but I did I did get to watch you know the tribute that they did yeah. to her work. She's hysterical. I love that yeah. woman. <laughs> yeah. I never even met her. Um, but... No, it was cool. Uh, I, I got to run into a bunch of people behind the behind the scenes. I met John Legend. I met uh, Sharon Osbourne for like the third or fourth time. Tyra Banks was there. Got to meet a lot of people, and everybody was very, very nice. It was a great mm-hmm. night pretty much all around. All right, well, let's talk about you guys have had some big things going on the last couple of weeks on yes. GH. So you had the big nurse's ball. Yeah. How fun was it shooting these scenes? There were so many great performances, action. I uh, I get massive performance anxiety anytime the word dance comes up. <laughs> it literally turns me into stone. I don't know what no. it is. It's like my kryptonite. If we're talking superhero <laughs> yeah, yeah. club here, just no bueno. Um, and I... Uh, I also tweaked my knee really bad about three weeks before the performance, which everybody's like, oh, you just did that on purpose. And <laughs> I'm sure like, no, did. dude, I, I'm MRIs and x-rays and thousands of dollars in diagnostics deep. Trust me. I've never been like hurt before. Uh-huh. So I'm kind of, I'm still kind of in a weird spot. I'm in that weird gray area where like it doesn't hurt all the time anymore, but I'm also not quite at that area where uh, that time where the doc says you're okay to resume right. normal activity. So I'm kind of like testing things like, is this okay? Yeah. What about if I jump from here? Is that okay? Like stairs are fine now, but it's still, it's kind of weird in the morning or at night, or if it's really cold, it's a little creaky. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so it was weird. We found a way to kind of work it in there in some way, shape or form. I just lifted weights <laughs> <laughs> slightly rhythmically. Um, but it was fun. I mean, anything with that group of people is going to be mm-hmm. fun. I work with cool people. I'm a lucky guy. I work with cool people in a variety of places, so I'm a pretty lucky yeah. guy professionally. Yeah, it seemed like a lot of fun. Well, now, so dancing is out. There was a lot of singing <sighs> over here. You sing? I'm so not a singer. If you want me to do like karaoke to Bad Religion because my vocal range is about yay uh-huh. big, we're working on that. Um, I could probably do that. It might take a couple of beers or two to kind of solve it. <laughs> yes, uh-huh. But... I don't know. I'm working on it. I'm open to a lot of things. I like, I'll take training in whatever avenues I can take it. So, you know, I'm not above it. I like Mm -hmm. it. It's fun. You know, if you can't make fun of yourself, you can't have a little bit of fun. If you're stuck taking yourself that seriously, what can you do? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, you had some huge scenes with Nathan and Maxie. How, I did. So it worked for you to bring a different date to the event and make her her jealous. Your plan worked, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like. I feel like only in soaps that plan would work. I feel like in real life, if I was like kind of having problems with a lady and I just decided to take another lady to yeah. a big event to, and then kiss her in front of the other girl to make her jealous, no, that's it. That's Probably nails, not a good idea. That's nails in your coffin. <laughs> yeah. But but at the nurse's ball, it seemed to work out okay. So, um, you know, fingers crossed that that remains. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, can you tell us? I mean, she can't spill anything, but or where would you like it to go? I, I can tell ask. you that, as far as I know, Nathan and Maxie are happy for a little bit, but right. who knows? Yay. You know, I mean, it's it's poor Charles, man. There's yeah. stuff just goes sideways. <laughs> it just kind of <laughs> does. So who knows? Yeah. Who knows how long that'll last? But for the time being, we're pretty happy. So Maxie fans will be pretty stoked. Uh, yeah, that. I think there'll be a lot of people <laughs> liking that one. <laughs> Yeah. So what's it like, um, your casting director, Mark Teschner, yes. you know, what's it like having a casting director like him, somebody that really, really loves actors? I mean, he, he does. Mark is a saint. All right. I, 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 and this is not to toot my own horn, but my story is kind of a story that doesn't happen in Hollywood anymore because I came to Mark with nothing. I was like a commercial dude and I worked out a lot. Congratulations. That makes you unique in L.A. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he knew my managers really well, and the way that I came into his office was really informal. I was just hanging out, literally playing video games with my manager <laughs> one day, which is not all he does. He'll kill me for saying that. It's not. That's not it at all. It's just he is forgiving of the fact that I'm a total geek and lets me borrow his his video game stuff when I go over to his house, and he talks at me while I do What's stuff. What's your favorite game? Uh, favorite. I'm currently... Play, I play a lot of Destiny and Shadow of Mordor. I'm a I'm a geek. I just I have a really big TV and I just sit in front of my TV like this all the time. It's really bad. I need to get out more. Um, 
Um, no, I, I so it, I came into Mark's office really informally. I don't know that there was an audition or a part or anything like that per se. It was just a chat. He gave me some pages. We did our thing. And throughout the whole process, like I said, I, it's not exactly like I was cast on my resume. I didn't really have one. I didn't have a reel. I didn't have anything. I literally showed up at his doorstep kind of like this. And he put. Oh. And I'm lucky. I mean, I got a place to hang my hat, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm, a great place. <laughs> yeah. I will say it. Till the day I die, I'm a lucky guy. I have been very fortunate. So fingers crossed, the trend continues. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm going to try and <laughs> well, I'm try sure and you work very hard to make that. You know, let, let's talk about that. So, 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 what what is a day in the life of Ryan like? Uh, a work day in the life of Ryan. Let's do a work day first. Yeah. Okay, a work day in the life of Ryan. Um, it depends on what my call time is, but it's, it tends to be different every day. I'm usually a morning guy, so I'm usually in really early. I show up for morning blocking, which is at seven o'clock. Um, I don't, uh, we run we, we, we run dry blocking and that's kind of like our first attempt to audition with the people that we're going to do our scenes with um, I memorize stuff pretty fast so I'm, I'm off book almost every morning when I get there but we get the physical location of where things need to take place on the set yada 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 we do all that stuff in the morning and then we're released until whenever our scenes come up the first thing you do when you come in is you pick the shot list up and you can kind of see it maps out what your day is going to look mm-hmm. like and then if there's downtime, um, not that I have a ton of other casts to draw experience from, but one of the things that I love about this cast is that everybody's really open to running stuff with you. It's not like they don't want to talk to you mm-hmm. until it's time to do the thing and then they're just going to leave. Everybody makes themselves really accessible, which was great in the beginning. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's a family. It's kind of like all of our dressing rooms are all in the same area, so it's kind of the dorm experience I yeah. never got, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, any downtime not spent on set, we're eating together, talking together, running scenes together, and that's pretty much it until the stuff is done, and then we all kind of go our separate ways. We go mm-hmm. home. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anyone, anybody like a prankster on the set, or anybody the comic guy? Uh, I don't know that there's a lot of pranksters on set. I think most of the time we're pretty good. Uh, we're pretty good about kind of sticking to our guns when we get on set. Mm-hmm. But uh, Roger Howarth is hysterical. He really is. He's kind of one of those. He plays Franco on the mm-hmm. show. If you just kind of sit back and just let him talk for a little while, because periodically you can tell that they've written like a Franco paragraph where he's just supposed to kind of go off. And sometimes he'll get to ad lib it just a tiny bit. We don't, we all kind of stick to the words, but every so often when you want a really frenetic scene, he's good when you just let him run with it. And the guy's funny. He's really funny. Um, yeah, I think for the most part, though, we're all pretty good when it comes to just coming on set and we do our thing. It's a very well-oiled machine. Mm-hmm. We still have fun. Just yeah. because we're not joking around doesn't mean we're not fun. Yeah. But, but you guys crank things out. So like oh, other yeah. actors that only, you know, maybe have 22 episodes in a season or even like Netflix where it's 13 or 8. Yeah. Like, you, I mean, how many weeks off do you get a year? Um, well, we, we typically, because we don't have seasons, we're five weeks on, two weeks off. Mm-hmm. Five weeks on, two weeks off. That's kind of the pattern. Um, and, you know, God, we're going through somewhere between 110 to 140 pages of dialogue a day. Mm-hmm. So yeah. we move. <laughs> yeah. We move quickly. Um, but it's fun. Like I said, I don't have a ton of other experience in terms of scripted television to draw from. But I like the pace. Mm-hmm. I like it. When, especially when you get going and you get into a good rhythm. Things are just moving and it's cool. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Is there anything you would tell, now that you've been doing it a couple of years, on the sh- been on the show for a few years, mm-hmm. that you would look back and tell the Ryan that just started out? Like, what have you learned so far? Things to worry about, not worry about? Um, God, I mean, anybody who ever saw any of my beginning stuff, and I've got, we've got some great nicknames like Robocop and the Tin Man <laughs> and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, learning to find highs and lows in your voice. Your voice recorded never sounds the way you think it does when you're just talking. Like, if you don't believe me, I swear, listen to your voicemail. Listen to whatever that greeting is. And you'll be like, oh my God, is that how I sound all the time? <laughs> Seriously? Um, you you need to watch your own stuff to look for ticks that you do. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I cross my arms a lot. That's a very Ryan thing to do, to do this. I don't mean it to close myself off to anybody. I don't know why I do it. I just kind of mm-hmm. do. Um so yeah, to, I, I would have encouraged myself to watch my stuff more often, and I did if from a diagnostic standpoint in the beginning to kind of identify behaviors that you should like. See that that was don't ever do that again. Maybe just <laughs> maybe just never do that ever. But yeah, um, 
I don't know. I mean, I think I, I, I went into it knowing that this was going to be a learning experience. I certainly didn't come in with a mountain of experience mm -hmm. to draw from. So, I mean, I was happy with the fact that I was open to it. And, you know, it's some good days and some bad days. And I think I probably would have told myself to maybe be a little less hard on myself. Stop beating yourself up. You're learning. Um, I don't know. I think that's probably about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're also now getting opportunities to do hosting as well as yeah, the acting. Yeah, yeah. So you are being, you've been a co-host on The View and mm -hmm. then you're a correspondent for Extra. Uh -huh. How was the transition going from acting to hosting? Um, you know, it's really strange. Uh, hosting, and I don't know if this is, I'll, I guess I'll have to get an objective opinion, but I feel like it comes pretty naturally to me. I'm very comfortable with mm -hmm. it. I don't know if I'm any good at it yet, they, but they haven't stopped working with me yet. So, that, I mean, that must mean something. Again, I met Lisa uh, over at Extra in a very informal way as well. She just, I guess, saw some stuff and called me in, and we had a really long meeting, and I brought her a shell, and now we work together, and that's kind of that. Um, it's fun. I like it. I mean, it, it's just, it's conversational in nature. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you feel sitting here talking? I mean, it's... I like it because I like finding out things about people. Like, I was a journalism major, so I'm always, I like asking questions yeah. and just learning about people. So, yeah, I like it. It worked good for me. I like to find out stuff about people. And Extra is one of those, I mean, it's a huge outlet. Yeah. So it has provided me the opportunity to talk to some people that I never thought I'd mm -hmm. get a chance to speak with. And I'm not one to get starstruck, but I've got to talk. I have gotten to speak with some people who, I kind of drew a blank when I was talking to Judy Dench. Mm -hmm. That was, that was what do you what do i yeah what do i say to judy dench i don't know I do just, you get nervous like ever with every stuff? so often every so often i um i told emma watson i have a huge crush on her on a red carpet one time just because why not yeah um i was nervous talking to robert downey jr and we had a weird moment of eye lock where i think he picked up on the fact that i was just like oh god i don't know what to say <laughs> And he's just hysterical, and it was like his generosity as a performer. I know he knew, and he yeah. it, he had the power to kind of make that a terrible moment for me or a great moment for me. So instead, we just started joking about his wife at the time, who was about ready to pop. Uh -huh. It was like, if you need hot towels, I'm your guy. I'll, I'll be there. <laughs> just where where are you sitting? Where were you sitting? I I don't have tickets, but I, I'll I'll hang out out here if you want to call me or something. You know, he was a really yeah. really nice guy. Um. So I love I love it because it's it's given me the opportunity to speak with some people mm -hmm. that you never in a million years thought you would have gotten to speak with. I got to talk to Jeff Daniels. I was he just going to ask, did I read that he gave you tips? Hosting yeah, tip? well, what he was he laughing. He kind of said the same thing um, about, uh, you know, what's it like to be hosting and stuff like that. And I was like, I don't know, I'm pretty new at it. And we were talking about the newsroom and I was like, well, I mean, you're kind of... You're Will McAvoy. I mean, you got any pointers for me? And he was just like, always know your stuff. And he's like, yeah, I think you said something along the lines of, and you seem like you do, mm -hmm. which was kind of nice. Yeah. I don't know. He was he was really nice. I was I grew up watching like Dumb and Dumber, and I mean, so that was kind of a really cool moment for me. <laughs> yeah, like, I get to talk to Jeff Daniels, and I went home and called on my friends. It was kind of fun. <laughs> which is so funny growing up on that movie and then watching him in the newsroom. Totally now. different yeah. animal. Crazy. Yeah, it was a little weird when Dumb and Dumber Two came out. It was like yeah. to think of him back in that role now that it, yeah. you know used to him there. It was a but. trip. It was a trip, but he was cool. I loved it. If you were going, if you were in my shoes and yes. as a host, like what kind of questions do you wish hosts would ask you? I have no idea. <laughs> I, I kind of am not a, Maybe help me out I'm here. not a huge <laughs> fan of like of me. So I'm yeah. always kind of like, I don't know. What do you want to talk yeah. <laughs> What do you want to talk about? We'll talk about whatever you want to talk about. Um, no, I mean, I think, I think it's fun to get out there and talk about stuff that's a little like autobiographical every so often because mm -hmm. you get so used to just talking business all the time that it's kind of like, I like stuff too. Yeah. I hike. <laughs> um, I, uh, uh, I worked on my house all week. I repainted all the cabinets in my kitchen and swapped out all the hardware and I don't know, stuff like that, at home stuff, yeah. off work day schedules and you're an adventurer yeah. too, I hear. Yeah, I love I love being outside. I'm from Nebraska, so right. I was and I grew up on a lake, so all right. I love being outdoors and spent a lot of time in Colorado. So yeah, my family we were all about this the is outdoors. A good cup. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Um, well, so speaking of that, we're gonna dive in. You have on your on your Twitter. You call yes. yourself an actor, adventurer, and thinker. Yes. So okay, we've covered the acting. Let's go ahead and dive into some of your adventure. So I okay. have some more photos oh boy i mean some can call it you know stalking with the with uh social media now because everything is out there but we like to hear That's call it uh, yeah we like to call it um research so let's first okay. start talking about this baby 
That baby, her name is Lilith. Lilith? Lilith right. is sick right now. Lilith Aww. is in the shop. That's okay. Poor Lilith. But that's okay. She needed some TLC, and we're going to do some cosmetic stuff, too. So she's. I'm right. calling it a spa day for my body. It's cool. <laughs> like, she's, it's like part doctor visit, part uh-huh. Manny Petty deep tissue massage. Like, you know, we threw mm-hmm. a little bit of fun stuff in there for it. How too. long has Lilith been in your life? Lilith's been in my life not quite a year. Okay. She's new, new. She's still relatively right. new. I'm has go. she... Be- Go ahead. Oh, I know. We just go exploring in the hills yeah. and stuff like that. Um, it's fun. She's a fun ride. Awesome. Well, she's beautiful. All right. Let's dive. This was probably... We're starting with this one because this one was one of my favorites. Okay. So I'm going to read, though. You, you put a comment on this one. Oh, you yes. said, climbing by the sea teaches lessons valuable elsewhere in life, like I like timing is key and watch out for crabs. So I like it. like the humor, but yeah, if you, this one might be hard to see, but he's climbing on rocks in this gorgeous water. That's in uh, that's in Palos Verdes, and I had heard about a cave that we wanted to go and check out, so I mm-hmm. went down there to go look at it. Um, and what you don't get from that picture, because the water looks really, really tranquil, is that about mm-hmm. every three seconds, it surges, and it just... Is that this? That's that. All right, all we got the, the surge. So I had to kind of like hold on to this rock on the ceiling there and kind of dangle for a little while. Not that it's like the end yeah. of the world if you get wet, but... The sad part about it is, I believe, and I don't know the the name of the individual, but I think three days later, not a mile from there, someone drowned doing that. Um, I have a tendency to kind of leap before I look sometimes, I guess. Yeah. Um, but we did find the cave, and it was fun. I love I love stuff like this. I I don't know. I just I'm a I'm a big adventure buff. So yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. All right, this one I love too. Uh, B in the lake, girl. So where is this? He's diving off the cliffs into water. That's that's in uh, Lake Powell, Utah. And if you look really close in the picture, there's a dark patch right here. What you don't necessarily see is there's a rock shelf there that's in about six inches oh. of water. If you don't make it to that dark patch, I you'll smash it. your face. It'll it'll be really unpleasant. But it was super fun. We did a backpacking and kayaking trip there. And it was crazy. Slept on an island, made a fire nice. with sticks. It was fun. Uh-huh. All right. How long? <laughs> how many days was this adventure? Uh, you... four and change. Two days in, two days out. Nice. Something like that. It. Uh, I separated from the group at some point, um, and so I got back on the last day a lot faster than everybody else hmm. did. So I just waited at the canyon edge and I don't know, drank gallons of water <laughs> that we had waiting for us. By the time you get back, most of your supplies are depleted, and I had to give some of my supplies away to uh, the people that I went with when we separated like look you need this more than me yeah ration your water kids all right i just gave you four (laughs) bottles of water that's a big deal it's a big deal especially out there when it's 110 degrees i was laughing with them i was like it's day one kid you think you're thirsty now how thirsty do you think you're going to be on day four it's 110 degrees outside right now i would suggest you maybe cool it on the water consumption where did you learn like to to prep for this kind of stuff like how to Uh, trial and error um my dad and my mom were really outdoorsy people before me and my dad continued to take me on trips like that when I was a kid Mm -hmm. and a couple with my mom as well my mom was really kind of the one who presided over tropical vacations and I love 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 that I just want to walk around in swim trunks and barefoot and just have sand everywhere all the time it's great Um, but Pops is kind of the one who introduced me to forests and things like that Um, and yeah I just I've always been really good at outdoorsy stuff and I'm very comfortable there it's kind of like my element Um, Mm -hmm. and so you kind of progress from just day hikes to camping trips to backpacking trips um and i I dated a girl once upon a time who was really into backpacking and kind of showed me the ropes a little bit in the beginning about what it takes in terms of gear and things Mm -hmm. like that um and that first backpacking trip is always really kind of cool when you walk away from your car and you lose sight of it and you're like i'm not going to see that thing again for a few days and at some point tonight i don't know where we're going to go to sleep in the dirt and that'll be that and Mm -hmm. everything that i have to eat and drink is on my back right now so you just learn. Um, in the beginning, you just do it very left brain. I just divide up how much water I brought and how much food I brought, and that's how many times I get to eat or drink during the daytime. So you just monitor your consumption, provided you stick to your plan, you'll be okay. Mm-hmm. It's fun. And it's fine. Once you get comfortable with it, it's a ton of fun. I feel like a lot of people who aren't that experienced with it, it's kind of a terrifying experience. Mm-hmm. Um, but once you get comfortable with it and you figure out a plan, it's great. Mm-hmm. It's super fun. It's very freeing to be out like in the middle of nowhere and just be like, you know what? We've gone far enough today. I yeah. think I'm gonna. I think we're gonna stay here tonight. 
Especially yeah. nowadays, right? And the, with all the social media, we're all so connected to our phones and computers and stuff so much that I think it's really freeing to get back to that and step away. I have a love-hate relationship yeah. with technology. I don't know. So every so often I need to jump off a rock into some water in a hot place. So did you do that first or did uh, did you let somebody else Oh, go no, for I'm it? always, I, I did that first. first. I, not that it was any, I, I think the only reason I did it first is because I got to the rock first. Mm -hmm. I don't know that anybody was like terrified of it or anything like that, but we've been doing it all day, just looking for stuff to jump. It's so hot. Yeah. The only way to thermoregulate when it's like that is to just keep getting wet. I had this little half wetsuit on that was great because I could keep splashing water mm -hmm. in there and just be like, oh my God. <laughs> Milk was a bad choice. <laughs> it, was, it was warm. Um, awesome. All right. I think this is the same same place. Or not? Yeah, that's. Yeah. Um, you never realize how slow you paddle until you get into a very large, wide open place, and then it just feels like you're crawling. Yeah. It's intense. Hi, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right. How about this one? That's Malibu Creek. Yeah, that's so um, that is left over from the mash set. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a couple of sets left over, some trucks and some things like that. Um, and I do a lot of hiking and stuff in the Malibu area as well. So, yeah. If is you this go one Malibu fin, too? That is Malibu Next Creek day, as yeah. well, uh, when there was actually some water. Yeah. Those days are few and far between these days, sadly. Sadly here, yeah. Uh. Um, All right, so now we have some rock climbing shots. Oh, yeah. So where was this one at? Oh man, that was a really sketchy day. Um, so what you don't see is about 20 feet in front of me, it gets steeper than it already is. And we're maybe 50 feet up from the next elevation change. So uh -huh. the rock face kind of started like this. And then there was this phase, which is the one that I'm on. And then there was this phase. I don't remember the name of the place. I feel like it's like Little Creek, I think. It's east a ways, it's quite a ways. Um, we were looking for waterfalls and uh, we had gotten to the top of the first one and were told that there were four consecutive ones, but no real beaten path to get to them, except that we've seen pictures on top of, so people get up there, I know there is, because photographers have gotten up there with their camera and taken pictures, so I know it's possible. And I'm one of those people, I'm like, I don't care if there's a trail, there's a picture, if there's a yeah. picture, somebody got up there, and if that guy or girl can get up there, so can I. So we started walking around, and this is actually a failed route. We went up this rock face, and we kind of climbed up that thing, and I got to a point where I was like, if I fall right now, yeah. I'm going to die. Because you're I'm, not tied into anything, right? You're just no, free climbing. No, if you yeah. fell, I would have rolled and just been a, like a, an accordion at the bottom of that rock face, just a broken bunch of nastiness. <laughs> um, but I climbed up the steep one for about 10 feet or so, too, and I was like, I don't know if I can do this backwards. So um, since I'm fairly certain I can't do it down and I'm not sure if there's another way down mm -hmm. and it didn't, at this point, we were kind of going away from the waterfalls. The waterfalls are kind of to my right at this point. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like this is wrong. I don't know. And I, it's starting to get a little sketchy here and we don't have ropes. So I think I'm going to maybe back down and let's do this real slow and we'll find another way. We did eventually find our way up to the third nice. before we ran out of time. But ah. that was a fun trip. That was, I had a legit moment of vertigo on the oh, the steeper one where I literally had to kind of like hug the rock face for a minute and just be like, it'll pass, it'll pass, it'll pass, it'll pass. Yeah, it's a really good way. I've done some <laughs> rock climbing and it's a really good way to feel really small really quickly oh, and yeah. all of a sudden have all your fears like just rushed because oh, yeah. <laughs> you realize oh, that, yeah, yeah it you It felt die. really, really high. I yeah. just remember that yeah. feeling really high. Um, but it was cool, you know. I mean, I like moments like that. Yeah. I've been fortunate enough not to get seriously injured doing any of them. So you walk away from things like that, and you're like, yeah. "All right, I got the blood flowing a little yeah. bit. I'm alive. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. We're good. I made it." <laughs> yeah. Well, let's. Let me see if I got. Oh, this one's. Let's just do this one last real quick because these were great. So, okay. jumping on rocks. Jumping these on, ones. off, yeah. in between. Joshua Tree, one of my favorite places to climb. Two Same of them, thing. Right? Yeah. yeah. That's how my knee got jacked up because I just kind of. Too much hard impact. Mm -hmm. um, we thought in the beginning that it was a torn meniscus, but it's actually bone problems from where the meniscus connects. All that impact, the uh, tendons pull on the bone so hard that they're fracturing. So the doc was like, that, don't do that. So this is out for a while. That's out now. for a while. I'm still a month and change out before I'm allowed to go and do stuff like that. And he still advises against it. I'm I mean, what is do it anyways. Because <laughs> yeah, what does that feel like? I mean, it looks pretty like amazing jumping. I don't know. That. I like jumping around. And all I know is I break contact with the ground and it tends to be a while before I make contact again. And all I hear is wind going by my ears. Mm -hmm. And it's like an addictive feeling. I used to love trail running, but I can't do that either because 
you start going downhill and your knees are sucking up mm -hmm. all this shock i can't do that either so that's kind of i've been kind of bummed about that lately i've been hungry for a new adventure but i've been yeah. kind of trying to take it easy for a little bit and limit myself to like pretty docile day trips yeah. um but yeah, I'm, I'm ready for another J tree trip flying yeah. around in those rocks. Where are some places that, places or adventures that are on your hit list that you really want to do? I need to go to Greece. I need to go and backpack Thailand. Um, and I'd love to get back to the islands, to Hawaii or, mm -hmm. or Costa Rica as well, as places that I've spent a, a good chunk of time at and kind of have a place in my heart. Mm -hmm. And again, I mean, good people good food walk around on my board shorts go for a surf yeah. sand on my feet all the time i get sunburned once on the first day i get really really dark mm -hmm. really fast so that first day when your skin acclimates is a little bit rough but after that i've been hungry for the tropics yeah. lately i think that might need to be the next adventure i think you should plan it yeah i'm good with it <laughs> i'm good with it all right now that we've covered some of the uh more of the adventure stuff let's i want to talk briefly about um you recently auditioned, or you were auditioned, I did, you auditioned for Fifty Shades of Grey. And you talked about this on The View, but they kind of cut off the second half. So I want to know what happened on the second part of your audition when you went in there. Well, it's, like, it's not, it's not, and I have to kind of recorrect that too, because I have a tendency to start talking really fast. I didn't mean it to sound as gross as it kind of, it kind of did, but I mean... <laughs> Dang, anybody we who's to hear an, about that. anybody <laughs> well, anybody who's an actor in LA has had to kiss people for an audition. It wasn't that like it wasn't like a CD audition or anything like that. But that's what you do. You you you're given pages, you memorize them, and you go in and you do stuff. Um, and it gets a little bit more dynamic when you get to audition with somebody. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really all it was. We had a kissing scene, and it was a little bit like aggressive. And so there's a little bit of awkwardness there where mm -hmm. you you know that you're going to go into this room with this person that you maybe just met and hopefully got to talk to for about five minutes before you go in there and do whatever it is the scene asks mm -hmm. you to do. Um, but it was really cool. And and auditions like that always come with this extra weight load because you know this is going to be such a huge prog yeah. and I kind of like that it does it it breaks that autopilot that some of us get into especially if you've been auditioning a lot a lot mm -hmm. a lot a lot a lot a lot a lot it becomes routine and you have to find ways to to not lose your connection mm -hmm. to to snap out of a little bit so when these projects have a lot of weight like that it's good yeah gets your heart beating what kind of research did you do for this <laughs> this christian gray role? Oh, I'm, not a, I'm not a kiss and tell kind of guy but All use right. your use your imagination <laughs> dang guys i thought i'd get you some good good, good stuff there <laughs> well i mean I, I, we, I think we've all got a 50 shades or story or two from our from personal experience mm -hmm. so maybe <laughs> maybe <laughs> no, no. oh come now <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't right. know. You just, you just, you, all of the things that make you blush, just do that. Yeah. You're good. Just do that. But do them at, with a straight face, even if you blush. Mm -hmm. Don't blush can be skin tone, but don't let it be facial expression. Just do it. Afterwards, you yeah. can blush and sweat. And be like, oh my god, that was so ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. But if you keep it together for the scene, you're yeah. good. Afterwards, you can just be like, oh my god, this is so like, <laughs> When you're back in your car, I need air. Like, yeah. My back's really hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> so what is that like for you? As I did have this, I believe this was people where you are listed in the sexy oh, at every God. age. So you're bringing up the 30s there. I am. Like, I, am I, mean, the, I am the 30-year-old guy. That's, 30s that's gray, me. right? Yeah. It's been good so far. 30s been a great year. Um, I, I have a complete and utter inability to talk about stuff like that. I'm very honored to be on yeah. the list. I'm very flattered yeah. to be on the I list, mean, particularly next, Look right, all, yeah, right? next to some really cool yeah. people. Dwayne so. Wade. Yeah. The, the, cool. the thought that somebody somewhere decided that they were going to put my mug on that list is pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. That's like, <laughs> <laughs> makes yeah, me a little bashful, good, right? but it's kind of cool. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. I mean, I'm coming up on 31. I don't know if this is an annual thing, but maybe next year I'll, I'll maybe at some point I'll make that list again. Yeah, I think it is. Or people's what Unless sexiest getting, man alive? You can go for that grosser, one, right? Maybe. I hope I'm not. No, I don't think you have that problem. Uh, <laughs> Let's talk a little bit. We have a little more time about. Um, I had a question from a fan. Actually, I should. Okay. I told her I would read her name. So let me. Let's do Let it. me do that. All right. So it. this was Africa at Miss Africa 73. She says, what kind of kid were you growing up? Uh, a boy. I was a boy growing up. Get in I, trouble. I, you... I was kind of a latchkey kid. Both my parents worked a lot, so I had a lot of free time. Um, uh, I spent a lot of time with my best friend, Toshi, 
at the time. And we were both kind of that way. Our, par- our parents worked a lot. So it was kind of like Toshi and I versus the world. Mm-hmm. Spent a lot of time hanging out at his house. I learned how to read and write uh, Japanese and watched a lot of cartoons and ate a lot of Japanese food. And we would skateboard all over the place. And I was always coming home all busted up from mm-hmm. something. And I got into BMXing and broke my head. And my doctor told me I'm not allowed to do that anymore either. <laughs> I was, I mean, I think I was just a your typical kid. I liked being outdoors. I liked being dirty, you mm-hmm. know, and, and rolling around in the park and going camping and finding snakes and catching caterpillars and weird stuff like that, little boy stuff. I don't know. Um, I got good grades. I don't think I got in a lot of trouble. I think I was an okay kid. We'd have to ask my mm-hmm. mom for that one. We'll get, we'll get my mom in here on After Bus. She'll give you all kinds of dirt. We should get your mom. That'd be She'll fun. She'll get you all kinds of dirt. She'll come here with baby pictures and all sorts of crazy stuff. And we should have had her come Lord. in since it's Mother's Day and oh, all. Oh, God. should have. Joined oh, God. Us. Get the real juice. Um, and you have a younger sister? I do. That, are, were you a good older brother? Did you pick on her? Oh, How God, no. I'm homicidally overprotective <laughs> with my little sister. It's crazy talk. Um, no, I love her to death. Um, and she's uh, she's got her eyes set on the medical field. I'm proud of her. Mm. She's, she's signed up for a long, tough mm. road, but I think she's got a good head on her shoulders. I think mm. she's going to do fine. Did she ever date any of your friends or was there any oh, time? Oh, God, that- no. No, there was a standing death threat to any of my friends. Like, no, seriously, I know where you all sleep. I'll end yeah. you if you touch my sister. It'll be a really bad thing for you. Just don't. I mean it. I mean, do I look like I'm joking? I'm not joking. If you touch my sister, I'll kill you. Mm-hmm. But that was before. No, 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 no. I mean, I, 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 I had to kind of struggle with, I want to be the big protective older brother, but I also don't want to, like, get in her way you know like i kind of try and let her decide what's my business Mm -hmm. you know like she's a good kid well she's not a kid but she was a good kid she didn't get in a lot of trouble it wasn't like i had i was her parent or like she needed monitoring or anything like Mm -hmm. that and so i guess i kind of lucked out that way my friends were pretty respectful of it my constant death threats probably helped (laughs) with that um but yeah i mean i never really had anything like that i don't know that we've ever had a fight Mm -hmm. in our lives Mm -hmm. ever wow wow that's amazing for brother and sister so yeah I'm lucky wow. there too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. Well, it sounds like you have your family's just really close. You've described your dad as being real salt of the earth type too. Yeah. You know, what do you think? Like from your childhood and your experiences, do you carry with you now? Like, um, I definitely, I definitely grew up with a uh, a respect for the mind, for mm-hmm. intelligence, for being able to think. Um, I don't know that that's necessarily because I'm a super left brain guy sometimes. I don't know that that's helped my acting any, Mm -hmm. but I'm usually really good at all the logistics stuff. Like I know my words and I know where I'm supposed to be all the time and I'm aggressively punctual. Um, But, uh, you know, I credit my parents for my love of the outdoors, which Mm -hmm. has brought me a great deal of satisfaction. Um, I don't know. I think those are kind of the the pillars of my life Mm -hmm. are, are, you know, being fit of body and mind and, and being willing to do the dirty jobs and get outside and and not take yourself seriously. I go camping, I sleep in the dirt. I love my bed too. Mm -hmm. I have a nice bed. It's not grubby, but just to be able to thrive in a variety of situations. I go Mm -hmm. camping and take a nap on the ground. I can cook over fire and do all sorts of stuff like that. And I'm I'm lucky that, that people who knew how to do this stuff saw fit to teach me things that now... I can show my friends or we can go and they show me stuff, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's great. And uh, I think I try and take notes from both my parents in their hunger to learn, you mm-hmm. know, you, you, there's no such thing as useless knowledge. So mm-hmm. I'm always like, I'm trying to sponge up as much as possible. It's not like you're going to run out of space. Yeah. So I'm glad yeah. you brought that up because that tapped into our third the third thing we that you said on there that you were a thinker. Yes, and I know we're about running out of time, so I want to say, but is, was one of your books favorite books, The Giving Tree? Oh, I love The yeah. Giving and Tree. and why is that your it's favorite book? It's so sad, though. It's kind of sad. It always kind of pulls at the right? heartstrings. Um, but I, I mean, I a lesson to be learned from that book. I try and be generous mm-hmm. all the time, um, and I think that generosity is an admirable quality. Uh, I wish that. I wish that's it was a little more widespread sometimes. Yeah. It's hard to see. I'm such a yes man that anytime I hear anything about charity or anything like that, I'm like, oh God, I want to go do this. I want to go do that. I want to yeah. do this. We did a little bit of GH stuff with uh, Habitat for Humanity. I love doing stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I kind of grew up tooling on stuff with my dad. I was a little bit of a construction brat. Um, so I like doing that. Um, yeah. Uh, I would put the giving tree on that list. Um, I think the next one I've been told that I need to read is Brave New World. I've got a friend reading it right mm-hmm. now. So I better hurry up and get that on the list here quick. Um, But yeah, I do like to read. And I'm looking forward to some new editions here. 
All right. Well, you guys, I, I hear the music playing, so uh -oh. I think they're cueing me is that, that the, I need to go. Is that the go. end of the line music? Yeah. So we won't. Yeah. Um, uh, but talk real, really quickly. You okay. guys are doing live episodes yes, next we week, correct? So yes, we are. you ready for that? You know, I'm not in them, oh. so I'm totally so you're ready. ready. I'm go gonna, for it. <laughs> I'm gonna coast right through it. I uh, I did get to do a piece with extra uh, on the live episodes. Mm -hmm. I spoke to Laura Wright and Maurice Bernard about their participation in them. It's going to be this upcoming Friday and the following Monday. Um, I'm jazzed for it. I'm super excited. I'm not even working that day, and I might show up yeah. just to watch, just yeah. to see the process. It's kind of a cool thing. So I'm excited, and I'm not even in them. I can only imagine the the folks who are in them, what they're feeling, you yeah. know, and the, the differences in the way one prepares and the way it's going to be. So I'm super excited. I'm yeah. stoked we're doing it. It's going to be cool. Yeah, it'll be great. All right, everybody tune in for that. Okay, so for all your fans out there, they're all following you, but look. Say where everybody can follow you again one more time. Um, you can find me on Twitter, at Ryan Pavey, um, and on Instagram, which you should probably maybe just go to my Twitter and get that, because my name is is, uh, is a long one, but at Ryan Pavey Vlieger, as one big gigantic word. If you can spell that without checking, <laughs> I'll be dumbstruck. <laughs> All right, there you go. Well, thank you so much for coming, coming back second time. We oh, yeah, love yeah. you here at After Buzz. You're welcome anytime. Thank you for having me again. So, it's fun. Uh, you guys can follow me at JJ Jorgens on Twitter, Jorgens JJ on Instagram, and at my blog at TomGirl.tv. Thanks so much. We'll see you again soon. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.